when choosing an automation system, people usually bring up the age-old debate of a PLC versus DCS. But today there's many more options that may better fit your application and your requirements. My name is Roy Tanner, I'm with ABB. Today I'd like to take a few minutes to walk you through some of the criteria you should look at when choosing the right automation system for you and your application. One analogy could be automobiles. In the past you had two kinds of cars, you had sedans and pickups. And now you have a whole range. You have uh, pickups, SUVs, crossovers, and sedans, two-seaters. You have a myriad of options in between the two levels. A similar situation now exists in the world of control. Applications with high speed requirements, like packaging lines, machine control, uh, with a large amount of discrete I.O., is clearly a PLC application. And then there are applications that require a, a large amount of analog I.O., such as oil and gas, metals and mining, pulp and paper, and they require distributed architectures with multiple controllers. This clearly points to a DCS. If you have an application that's contained within one controller, that might lean you towards a PLC. If you have an application that is distributed across multiple controllers, all needing coordinated control, then you might lean towards a DCS. When it comes to alarm management, in a PLC application, there's multiple places where you have to manage that alarm. It could be in the controller, it could be up in the HMI, and when applications get too large, this, this could get quite complex over time. DCS systems are architected to handle a large amount of alarms and present them to many operators. They also help create an alarm management strategy and have features such as alarm shelving, alarm hiding or dynamic suppression, and alarm analysis. While PLCs integrate with lower level devices and bring that data up into the controller and possibly the HMI, the DCS is architected to bring that device data and its asset optimization information all the way up through to uh, higher level packages like Maximo and SAP. There's a million applications between that packaging line and an oil refinery. And in the past, engineers used to force fit a PLC or a DCS into those applications based on what they're used to. And today, much like the automobile analogy where you have uh, sedans, crossovers, and SUVs and pickups, we have more options available, such as a process PLC or a small hybrid DCS. For example, you now have the option of having a logic controller that is still modular and flexible for OEM applications that have the analog control capabilities of a large DCS. This lines up well with those users that are used to a PLC SCADA approach to, but may need the robust controls to give them that competitive edge. Also, systems are available that have all of the advantages of a large DCS, such as a single tag database, uh, all the alarming, the trending, um, integrated diagnostics, for the price and size of a small PLC. This solution is great for small to medium applications, such as standalone boilers and gas processing, and can really help customers lower their total cost of ownership, as it's really easy to maintain. When selecting an automation system, we urge all engineers to take a look at what's available today. Now there are many more options that may better fit your application and requirements to ensure your success and profitability. I'm Roy Tanner with ABB.